Hello everybody, good morning. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, just putting that, uh, please I mean, join and then, you know, ask the questions if you have uh, really want to clarify kind of a concept related to the business analyst. Uh, it's <clears throat> roles and responsibilities, the organizations, how it works, day-to-day uh, -day activities, etc., etc. I mean, you are welcome. Yeah. Okay. Please ask your questions here. Okay. So, yeah, please ask your question. Uh, okay. And then I will be try my best to re respond on that. Okay. So, I mean, see, nowadays, I meanwhile I'll just give a little bit exposure of what's going on in the current uh, it industries uh, so we are seeing a lot of changes in terms of uh, um, traditional it uh, you know uh, the work style uh, now the roles also a little bit uh, changing if i talk about uh, uh, the earlier there were system based applications right uh, it, it's like you need to install an uh, installer in that in your system uh, desktop base or laptop and then you will execute the exe and then it will run and then you do the job it will store in your local database and then uh, you have to establish a vpn uh, that's a later change you know uh, earlier it was standalone and data is stored in your local uh, database in your local uh, hard disk basically your laptop or system later vpn comes where you will be uh, connecting the establishing the network between your uh, server which is uh, which might be some other location some other city and then you will be accessing that system based application from your laptop from your desktop and then when you save any data it basically save in that uh, uh, server uh, which is connected to your vpn uh, so that's the evolution we see okay uh, so instead of storing in the local database it gets stored into the vpn connected server which might be in different city different uh, state okay now if you see the evolution okay so evolution from local data local system hardest then a server which is which might be located to some other city or state and then uh, cloud-based a uh, cloud-based means uh, you basically it's a it's a web-based now now it's no more system-based application it's now a web-based application when i say web-based application it means you will be running your application on browser rather than you will be installing something in your um, uh, local system and clicking on exe file and then it open kind of very normal screen and then you will be capturing your day-to-day -day activities but now it's a web-based application it means it is giving the leverage to the users to access that uh, application across the world no need to carry any specific device where you will be get forced to install some system, the software and then only you will be able to access no it's a web-based application you as long as you will be having a valid credentials login username and password you can access that application across anywhere from any system i can if i don't have I, my, my mobile got stolen on my laptop i forgot somewhere it got stolen and it is an urgent transaction i have to make as long as you have a you remember your valid credentials you log in that in any your friend uh, your colleagues laptop and system and you can do that transaction because it's a uh, uh, it's basically a web-based application okay hey rashaker hi good morning thanks for joining so uh, that's that's the evolution and then there's a cloud why the cloud comes in picture you know uh, guys please uh, post your questions so that i can respond okay i will be here till uh, next 30 minutes okay so please ask your questions which you are thinking real challenges in your day-to-day -day activity um uh, i refer one person prashant thank you very much Rashekar. thank you thank you very much thank you see when we share knowledge different
the, see the whole objective once i started my this youtube channel is that only you know see, giving the see i remember one of my uh, senior he was in btec senior actually so uh, i was taking help uh, from him on da concept daa the data al 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 algorithm analysis you know we have in btec one subject da i found very difficult but the way my senior helped me uh, the concept clarity and all that i i really appreciate at till today as well because even though i'm not utilizing that information but yes of course it was useful during my academics i don't have a direct connection with him i don't know where he is now but i always memorize uh, him uh, as his effort he has given on my clearing the concept on the da so sharing knowledge is always a great thing so yes uh, 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 please uh, you know share these uh, my videos channel to your friend and circle uh, they will also if they can learn something from this my channel definitely it's a great great uh, uh, i mean it will really appreciate to me yeah uh, it boost my confidence it boost my you know thought process like i have to keep on giving that uh, uh, contribution to the community okay okay so what i was telling uh, so once we have a cloud based uh, why why we are moving to the cloud based solutioning so till we have base application is still you will be having the uh, on prem uh, you can have the servers but cloud based comes in picture where you will be basing putting everything on the cloud so cloud service provider are are, are the amazon uh, web services microsoft uh, uh, azure so these are oracle cloud so a lot of oci we call it so these companies basically providing you uh, the hosting facility where your application will be hosted as well as a database requirement system requirement infra requirement performance they will take care of everything you just need to code your application deploy it rest rest up they will be making sure any nfr non function requirement like availability performance everything they will take care okay okay so now how the evolution further changing is Uh, the traditional approach of application is going away where the only one application they uh, develop and deploy uh, for internal users or for external users external users means client users now it's changing how they are coming up with the platform the platform is the something where you will be having your different applications okay different applications so if a user i am a user i am a user of this application this application this application i no need to go and remember or bookmark these three different applications you are at no no need right because once i come to this platform i can access any of them correct so single single authentication authorization definitely is helping lot in this kind of environment okay Okay, so Rashikar, yeah, uh, but mentor require those who beginner. Okay, I mean, see, you can you know my email ID. If I, I don't know. You just you can directly message me there. Okay, if you need any personal assistance and all that, I I don't know if you are, my videos itself is helping a lot. So please go through them. If you see it's not working out, you need personal assistance and all that, please. you know okay so what is that when i'm using a scrum framework okay the question is uh, yeah yeah i know thank you thank you thank you rashekar yeah your video uh, with your videos anyone can get be a job i know people actually got that see i was just seeing that study uh, the how how much people got engaged with my videos is little disappointing you know two two minutes three minutes maximum i can see people are engaging half an hour one hour video i putting lot of information there and people are just watching for two minutes and going away they might be having some other priorities cricket match video uh, other movies and all that right i i know i understand nowadays people don't want to learn you know on the on the social media they want to explore different things on social media when they hold the mobile or laptop they don't want to learn the things uh, want to entertain themselves okay but whoever is sincere looking for a job change who literally want to have uh, learn the things definitely is very 
I I will say I see whatever I am having the understanding on the things. I'm just putting everything for you guys, okay? And nothing I'm hiding like uh, I'm keeping some information with me. I'm not sharing. It's not like that. Whatever I have, whatever expertization I have, learning so far my career, I'm putting everything, okay? So spend some time on these videos. I think you don't need anything else, okay? So your question, Rasikar, when I'm using Scrum framework, okay, it if we are not using BRD, then what documentation are we using? So Rasikar, it is purely depend on the organization or uh, and the client, like they want the requirements in a form of BRD or in form of an epic and user story. So if uh, I have worked in both kind of uh, clients and uh, companies where a client uh, a client is a client was developing a product, so they said, boss. You will develop the software, but at end we also want to see the overall functional requirements uh, where is uh, for my system need to be captured somewhere. That's where we created very specifically BRD for them, just for their uh, like, uh, and it was a live document till we close that project. So we will keep on updating the new requirements if they feel realize like oh no no we captured something wrong or. Uh, you need to update that requirement. So we are changing. So finally, whatever the products we have developed for them, the application, they will be having one replica, same requirements uh, document with them. So that if somebody is joining in that organization, they will just push that uh, BRD. They will under get that understanding. Okay, what is application in which technology it was built? What are the functionalities it is it is containing within that application? Like it is helping, but 99% organization don't do that. They go with the epic and user stories. So basically from Jira and Riley also, you can export all those user stories, uh, you know, into Excel sheet, into a document, into a PDF. So no need to create a separate BRD as, as such. Okay. We just need, we, we can go with the agile practice, create that epic and uh, user story. And if required for somebody's reference, you can export it and share it. Okay. So your question, uh, answer to your question is instead of BRD, we create epic and user stories in the agile scrum process. Okay. So there is no um, uh, sign of process in agile scrum process. Okay. In agile scrum, you create that uh, 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 backlog. You dis you will discuss with the client. You understand the requirement. You create that product backlog, right? I mean, you will create the epic and use the stories in backlog. Backlog means you will keep on creating the stories, but you have not prioritized them for your sprint. Okay, so keep on creating. Now, once you create it, now your prioritization comes. So that's the first uh, confirmation or sign off. Uh, it's not like they will give a sign off on a document or something. Okay, it's an agreement when you discuss a requirement uh, user stories with the client to prioritization point of view. They themselves is get giving you their consent. Okay, these are my prioritized user story. Take it forward into this sprint now. Important phase comes a sprint demo. When you demonstrate that user stories end of the sprint to the client and client agrees and you accept that is his stories and you send a MOM back to the client. This is what we have demonstrated. This is what the feedback we have received. These many participants we have attended in this demo. These are the demo URL. You might be recording that session. Say send it everything through email. That's where officially you are declaring whatever the uh, sprint level functionalities you have developed agreed by the client Khatam. okay okay your sunday discussion session very helpful work. okay yeah yeah thanks 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 rajshekar yeah see uh, that's why keeping this time i mean saturday sunday both both days so that you know people who doesn't cannot join on Saturday, they can at least join on Sunday. But it's still, I don't see uh, people having time, but it's okay. <laughs> I will do my job. Okay. So, okay. So your next question is, what is different epic and feature? 
what is difference between i think you're trying to ask oh yeah uh, it's a good question actually uh, nice question rashakar these kind of questions you know in the interview tech, uh, interviewer may ask you to test your general understanding on these artifacts so people sometimes people know these things but uh, but try when they try to explain uh, they fail to explain basically they don't able to consolidate their thought process in a in the form of a sentence where uh, they can uh, explain this to the interviewer in the way he want to listen okay so the epic difference between epic and feature basically epic uh, epic can contain multiple features so epic is a uh, epic is a broader perspective of your requirement so take example when you create application you may be having 10 epics or 15 epics or 20 epics based on the size of or uh, how big your application you are developing so one epic can float into multiple iteration or sprints so we create epic under that we create user stories so one epic can contains multiple features so a feature is not related to a document sorry feature is not a uh, prosperity or, or, or not not prosperity i mean is not a uh, essential part of any uh, brd or srs only feature is the application property it's very tightly close with your application you are developing so if you are representing the fun application functionality in a form of a epic then epic contains those features so within that epic you will define what are the i need one login that's one of the feature after login there is a dashboard that's another feature on the dashboard i want to see some data analytics uh, some some quick access for the uh some some uh, you know uh, uh, data analytics basically like how many how many sales happen last seven seven days how many um, uh, you know purchase order has been placed in last uh, uh, one month and what is that uh, total amount okay that kind of a queue in quick insights uh, you can be on the dashboard see so the another feature feature of the application so one epic can contain multiple features and that's what you will be breaking down into different user stories so if somebody is asking you what is the difference between epic and feature basically your straight forward question is uh, one uh, one epic can contains multiple features as as simple as okay i i hope i have answered you rashika right yeah okay so see sometimes you know into the interview uh, you have to you have to think twice thrice in your mind before you know answering okay can you explain about uh, what is this one can you explain about why we are going story point why not hours or days so user story we uh, there is a very separate video i have created rashekar if you can if you have time you can go through that video also user stories and all that okay uh, i have explained but just let me explain you again uh, quicker way see story points uh, is a kind of a representation of the uh, complexity and criticality of the uh, user story so you you will be having a fibonacci series these are some standard practice okay so in inside i mean in background each story point represents some hours only take example one story point it's organization we can decide together as a team uh, your your project manager your developers uh, scrum master your testers you can sit together and decide agreed like one day uh, how much uh, uh, what is that productive hour so it's a uh, 8 hours or 6 hours or 9 hours generally total 9 hours right per day we we go for a company in a company to work but not all 9 hours go into the production sometimes goes in a discussions uh, breaks tea breaks lunch and all that so that's why we can uh, want to consider only the productive hours when i say productive hours 
uh, basically you want to represent in some kind of a story point. That's a standard practice of the Agile. Okay, so it's a Fibonacci series: one, two, three, five, eight, like that. So eight represents. You can you can decide that you can agree within your team. Eight represents, as per my thought process. One developer, if get eight story point related work within that sprint, it means he is fully occupied for ten days of development. Right? You have to having having fourteen days. Right? Two week, two days will go in the weekend. I mean Saturday, Sunday, only twelve days out of twelve days, ten days for development, and then uh, two days for testing. So sixty sixty hours or eighty hours per day, eight hours or six hours. के हिसाब से you will having the maximum hours. So if he's having eight story points, that could represent your full capacity for that sprint. So user story level, you decide these uh, one story point effort or two story point effort. I mean, if 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 based on what is the complex, how much effort is required, how much uh, coding it is required, how much uh, database tables we have to create for this story. Everything developers visualize and then give this story points. If you see only one day is enough, he will give one story point. If you say two days will require, he will give two story point. If you say three or four days, they will give three three story point. If you say oh I need five or six or eight days, then he will give the uh, five story point. If you say oh I need all ten uh, days for this development, then it will ask you to give the eight story points. Okay, but you as a as a business analyst, you should be taking care. Like you should be breaking down the story. Uh, if it is going beyond that eight story point, you should break down. You should break down that story into the multiple user story so that none of a story, none of user story story points increase beyond the eight story points. Okay. And then when you create a task, when you create a task for that story, user story. Then developer gives the required effort, effort required, effort in hours. So hours we give in the task level, not the user story level. User story level we give only the story points. Okay. So one is I, I was I was telling you the same thing, right, Rajshekar? It depends on the. There is no standard. There is no nowhere it is mentioned across. If you Google it, also nowhere you will find different different logic, but. It's up to the organization. If your organization working hours are nine hours and you see there is a productive hours are eight hours or six hours, you can consider one story points equals to eight hour or six hours. It's a basically representing your total number of days. See how that story point complexity we determine. You pick up suppose there are ten stories user stories are there, so you will discuss. You pick this smallest and easiest story, and discuss, and give that marking, uh, one story point or two story point or three or जो भी है, for the easiest and the smallest user story in that sprint. When you done that, then you pick up the next story. You discuss these things, and you want to discuss these things. Basically, you will be, basically. Um, comparing that uh, new story with that easiest one, then you compare how much complex this story is compared to the previous one, which we have already, um, uh, you know, uh, estimated, which we have already um, uh, discussed. How much is complex? So if if you have given one one and it seems little more complex compared to the previous one, you give the two story points. If you have given the first uh, first story point to three, and you see um, this is to new story story user story is little easy compared to the previous story you have discussed, which you have given three story point, you can give two two story point soon. So you have to take up as a one base story, and from there you just need to compare to the other stories complexity, and that complexity rating is nothing but in the story points one two three uh, five eight. That is the Fibonacci series. Okay, so hours representing is totally depend on the organization to organization. As per my understanding, one story point represent half day or one day effort. Two story point equals two or three days efforts. Three story point equals refers like three to five days efforts. Five story points referred five to eight days efforts, and then eight story points refers. 
8 to 10 days efforts. That's how you need to visualize in terms of hours. And each day hour is 8 hours working, productive hours. Okay. How we know the developers working correct effort putting their story points. So that's up to you, right? See, if you, that's why you, when you go into that uh, uh, experience, uh, you get that, um, uh, getting that experience uh, uh, in the BA area, you know these tools and technology, software, coding, uh, coding, not level of coding, uh, but at least you should understand Are bhai, to do this, uh, writing this API, how much complex is this one? Or developing this UI, why it is taking so much time? It is having <coughs> five, six text field, one drop down, save button, and there is a one backend table. That's it. Why, how much time it will take? So based on experience, you can always uh, argue with that, but always it's a pure decision of the developer. And there is a team leader responsibility uh, who comes from the uh, technical, I mean, engin engineering side, developer side. He will ensure they are not over committing. When you say over committing, this is a matter of over commitment. I mean, you know it's an easy job, but you are intentionally over committing unnecessary. Okay. So it's a team uh, responsibility. Okay. I am saying three story point, but you will not say anything, brother. Why you will know you it's not your you are not going to go and implement. You will not give any any time any suggestion on the story points. No, you will just explain the feature user story epic. That's it. You will just explain the user story. They have to come up with that story points, not you. Okay. So if they are, you think they are over committing, you can ask your project manager, your team leader, uh, can you please have a look why the team is coming so much uh, uh, <coughs> story points, right? It seems like easy, but they are two cases, right? Either they don't have the requirement clarity. That's why they are giving so much uh, uh, requirements. If they having a clarity and then they, them, that also tie, they are giving this higher estimation, it means they are over committing unnecessarily, intentionally. Okay. If they are uh, don't have a clarity, you can re-explain them. Again, explain. Till they, you should be explaining them till they don't get the clarity. Okay. They should not have any question in their mind in terms of requirement clarity. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, so... For now, uh, keep your question with you. You can you can keep posting your questions on the video chat and all that. And then uh, I will be joining next week, Saturday and Sunday. I will be answering all those questions. Okay. So guys, keep keep learning. Keep watching these videos. Keep sharing these videos. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.